Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another video. Uh, I know that this has been like three days since my last post, um, but I moved back home with my family, and then yesterday was Father's Day, so I had a really nice time with my boys and with my dads, so uh, I know it's been a few days. I'm sorry about that, um, but now that I'm home, I should be able to start streaming, so keep an eye out for a streaming announcement soon for uh, what day it is that... I'm planning on streaming. I'm hoping to be able to stream um, every week. So uh, we left off with me starting to cover the ultimatums. And so uh, I covered one of the ultimatums, Eerie Ultimatum. Uh, so this is going to be the second video in my ultimatum video series. Uh, and this one's going to be on Emergent Ultimatum. And uh, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised with Emergent Ultimatum. I, I didn't think it would be that good, but uh, I found a deck that I really liked it in. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you can buff things up pretty quickly with this card. So uh, Emergent Ultimatum is 20 mana, and you're going to fetch the first four different monocolored cards from your library. Those cards are going to gain full mana. Then exile this card, and exile a random monocolored card from your hand. And disable each other card from your hand until end of turn. So the disabling each other card in your hand until end of turn makes it so that you cannot cast multiple emergent ultimatums in a turn, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. It'd be kind of cool if it was just like disable all the cards that you drew this turn or something, you know, uh, or that you fetched with the ultimatum. But, I mean, I guess it's fair. I mean, you're getting four cards for free. Uh, you lose one randomly, but that doesn't really wind up being that big of a deal. So I thought to myself, all right, um, what's the best way to use this card? And the obvious answer is, well, okay, you want to have four monocolored cards in your deck, right? Uh, and that's it. So I settled on this deck right here, uh, and I decided that I wanted my four monocolored cards to be creatures. And for those creatures, I wanted to have two creatures that buff the world like crazy. So Ronas, which is going to double your creature's power every time it comes into play. And Hamlet Back Goliath, which is going to get a boost in power toughness every time you play another creature. Along with the creature with the singular greatest power in the game, so Gaia's Revenge at 16-9. And then the fourth card, and you might be wondering why I want, wanted to go with four creatures, um, but I wanted to go with four creatures so that I could get a mutator. Uh, and then with that mutator, I could mutate Ronas. Uh, and so I could make my creatures even bigger. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that works out pretty well. You'll see that I've got High Alert and Xenagos. So High Alert is going to make it so that when my critters attack, um, they're going to get plus X plus zero, where X is their toughness. Uh, and then Xenagos, which is going to give them plus X plus X, where X is their power, right? Just one creature, but nonetheless, uh, it, it, it's another doubling power effect. I've got Castle of Antris and Mystic Sanctuary in here for gem conversion. And then, of course, Pyromancer's Goggles, which you're going to see in probably all the Ultimatum videos because... This card is bonkers with the ultimatums. And so you'll see that Emergent Ultimatum is the only spell in this deck. So uh, the, the idea behind this deck was just to see what I could do with this. Uh, so before we get into the gameplay, um, if you've made an Emergent Ultimatum deck that you think is pretty cool, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear what you guys have done uh, with this card. This is just the first thing. Well, actually, no, it was the second thing that came to my mind. Um, and this one really stuck. I, I really liked this one. So... Uh, let's go ahead, move on over to the gameplay. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go. All right, let's see what we got in our starting hand. Pyro goggles, perfect. All right, Castle Vantress, that's great too. All right, we got gem conversion. Uh, we got Pyromancer's goggles. So this means that we can probably do some pretty big things. Um, blue into green into red. Yes, please. That's 18 mana. Uh, that's 24 mana. I will take that. That gets me... Almost my goggles. Uh, that's, that's pretty sweet. Uh, we get Xenagos, which means that we'll start getting some super buffs. Uh, let's see. It looks like probably the black match might be the best, just because that's going to make it so that we can maybe get a blue. We, we don't get the blue. But that's okay. We'll get, we'll get the blue this turn. Uh, we're definitely getting Pyromancer's goggles down this turn. We want to get our Sanctuary down just so that we've got more gem conversion. More gem conversion means that more gems are blue. 
which also means that the goggles are more likely to go on to activated blue gems, which means I'll be more likely to get goggle activations. So all of that is good stuff. Uh, that green match on the bottom has to be a good, yeah, okay. So uh, that, that little green activated gem on the bottom, uh, that, that should be a Pyromancer's goggles. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that green match to get the uh, the emergent ultimatum. So here's going to be our first emergent ultimatum. Uh, we get one of everything. It looks like we lost the Sea Dasher Octopus, maybe? Is that is that what I lost? I think so. Uh, that's that's probably like a best case scenario right there if, if it is. Um, so no, no, no. I lost... Uh, I lost Gaia. Okay. Well... We, we can we can live with that. So uh, we're going to play Xenagos here. Uh, we're going to play the Hamlet back. And then let's see. Uh, the Sea Dasher Octopus. I suppose I can mutate onto uh, the Hamlet back Goliath. So we can we can mutate Hamlet back. Uh, you might be thinking, why not save that for uh, the Ronas there? Oh my, I've got my third ability too. Uh, that's that's a whole world of unfair right there. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's get another Emergent Ultimatum. If you're wondering why I didn't make the blue match, that's a Castle Vantress match. Uh, and I definitely did not want the Castle Vantress match. So I'm going to let Xenagos' ability fizzle here. I don't need it this turn. And uh, Kalemni should probably be dead this next turn, is my guess, right? So I've got a 16-16. I've now got a 24-24, but I'm, I'm guessing that this will be the end of Kalemni uh, this turn. So I've got an Emergent Ultimatum. I've got a Gaia's, I've got the Ronas's, that octopus should be mutating Ronas, it should not be mutating Gaia. Um, yeah, I should I should toss that, I'm going to use my third ability here, uh, I've already gotten a few, no, no, no I want to keep the octopus, right? Yeah, because that, that's a guaranteed Ronas, whereas whatever else I draw might not be Ronas. So uh, let's, let's see how big these get, uh, this is definitely the end though, right? I'm going to be going from uh, 24 power to what a few hundred probably it's going to be a lot it's, it's going to be big it's going to be really big all right so two guys come down that's already at 72 ronas is going to start doubling uh and then not only is it going to double but it's going to buff the goliath again unfortunately it buffs it afterwards uh so the goliath is at 300 600 1200 we've got xenagos so about 2400 oh that's nasty all right well yeah this is the power of emergent ultimatum uh, 2,400 plus power Goliath, 26. So that's nasty. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, if you've got Emergent Ultimatum, you got the cards, make the deck, try it out yourself. It's, that's powerful. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.